Now, for this scale, you will need the following equipment. Obviously, a 10 mil syringe, an IV dressing pack, a tourniquet, some chloroprep. So you've got the license for skin use, skin preparations, 2% chlorhexidine and 70% alcohol, as well as the license for medical devices, skin preparation, um, medical devices preparation, 2% chlorhexidine and 70% alcohol. I've also got some saline 10 mils uh, for flushing my line once the cannula has been um, put in. I've also got my hole decks that I will use to connect to cannula if I need to collect blood at the same time as inserting the cannula. Um, I've also got some filter needles as I'm using a glass ampule and I'll explain the rationale for that a little bit later. We've also got our BD Nexiva cannula which we'll be using to demonstrate um, the cannulation technique and some gauze that you will need in case um, your patient bleeds or you need to remove that cannula immediately. Obviously, you will need um, the red top sunny cloth, 70% alcohol, 2% chlorhexidine, a clinical tray that you can decontaminate and use for this procedure, some alcohol gel, and a sharp spin. Very essential so that you can dispose of your sharps immediately after use. I've also got a set of gloves, um, and you can have choose gloves of your, so, uh, of your choice. However, I will suggest specifically to cannulation that you choose gloves that are as tight fitting or as close fitting to you as possible. Otherwise, it does become a little bit fiddly when we are doing dressing application and it can result in a messy dressing. First, I'm going to decontaminate my environment and prepare my tray for the processes of um, cannulation. So again, just a quick, if my tray was visibly dirty, then I would wash it with soap and water. However, if the tray has been washed with soap and water and it's actually clean, I'm just going to wipe that down with my alcohol wipes. And you're thinking of the technique using inside. Making sure you're getting into each compartment and then outside doing that for approximately 30 seconds and allowing that to dry right next step after that is i'm going to wash my own hands okay i've decontaminated my hands my next step is going to feel for a vein like i said in the earlier videos you may choose to wear gloves for that because the patient may feel more comfortable with you having wearing your gloves alternatively you can do that with um, your fingers um, if that is more comfortable for you and once again i always recommend you do a quick vein assessment before you prepare your equipment so that you know that you've actually got a vein you can access um, uh, prior to getting that ready for the patient obviously in this situation i might be headed for the cephalic vein that is aligned with our thumb over here alternatively you're thinking about looking at the hand uh, in terms of good veins that you could access for this patient and they are several on this mannequin that you can think of accessing thing to highlight about um, cannulation is it is about moving from the periphery strategically upwards in terms of the insertion of the cannula that allows the vein to maintain its integrity as much as possible and you can always move upwards to the next element of the cephalic without having a hole at the top of the cephalic meaning that you'll get leak when you introduce fluid um, replacement so in this situation i'm probably going to be headed for the cephalic in this direction i'm going to open my cannula and today we're going to be using the nesiva device um, which looks something like this it's got the needle free device in there don't get rid of it keep it in the tray because sometimes people forget um, so that you can attach it to the end of the other end that's got the air inlet valve i'm gonna pop that in my tray first and foremost uh, next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm also going to get my flush ready. Um, 
in this case i'm using a glass ampule so i am going to draw up my saline with a filter needle now a good technique for preparing or opening your glass ampules is to locate the dot align your fingers to the dot and then pop okay so as i highlighted earlier we've opened our saline and i'm going to use a filter needle as i've popped open a glass ampule and i don't want any glass particles being lodged um, within the patient so i'm getting rid using the filter to get rid of glass particles that might have accidentally gone into the vial drawing that up turning that over Ten mils popping that down just making sure I get rid of any air bubbles so that I don't have any air bubbles within that flush and just unscrewing my needle getting rid of that attaching that needle free device onto this so that it's ready for the flush when I need it once I've so I've got my flush ready next part I'm gonna get my cleaning equipment ready and my whole deck's ready in case I need to take blood when I insert the cannula in. My tourniquet, a blood bottle in case I need to collect some blood. And if I do happen to come into contact with a key part, then I'd obviously need to wipe down with the wipes. I've also got my IV dressing set, which I am going to open again at the stage. And again, within this, I have the patient label form, which is very useful to have because that's going to help us label where we've inserted the um, cannula and put that in the patient's notes. A clear turgidum dressing. I like to get that ready prior to actually cannulating the patient so that I'm not fiddling around too much when it comes to um, inserting the dressing. So I like to pull back the front window and get the two strips to stand up so that they're easily accessible for when I get ready with that. Um, I've also got my labels and I've got my gauze within my dressing set. So that's all ready for the actual tourniquet insertion. Once again, I've got my drape neatly here, which I'm just going to lay on the patient pillow, just so that I don't soil that or contaminate that when I insert the cannula. Right, my next task after this is again, I will just remove these gloves and decontaminate my hands as I get ready to actually um, insert this cannula into the patient. Again, good hand washing technique to decontaminate your hands. Then I will get my gloves on. Snap once to activate the liquid, give a gentle dab, and then a crosshatch action. Five to seven centimeters of area. Um, and if you're millennial, then it's hashtag for you. So up and down, then across. 30 seconds is what you're aiming for. And that should and then I can dispose of this once that's cleaned and I'm waiting for that to dry. The next step I'm going to do is in apply my tourniquet. 
again create an x with the long side overlapping the short side make a loop so pull the long end through to make a small loop as you pull on the short end and that should ensure that your cannula is secure tails facing away from the area where you've cleaned and about five to three centimeters above your point of insertion next i'm going to grab my cannula unsheathe my cannula again you can choose to hold your cannula like a pen if that is more comfortable to you or you can hold it against the wings if that gives you better grip um, i always say you will choose what's most comfortable for you it's got its own needle free device make sure you keep the needle free um, device or access um, open so that the clamp is not closed and that allows you to see your secondary flashback once that's um, in the vein um, and with this okay okay so first things first we're going to give our veins some traction and at a slightly steep angle you're going to introduce your needle so first flashback is quite quick once you hit the vein and then you need to sort of bring that to the skin flat side to the skin and then start to glide your catheter on top of the needle And then you should see your secondary flashback coming through uh, your extension set. Once that's completely through your um, extension set, you can clamp that. The next thing I'm going to use is just apply the small dressing to keep it secure before I flush it. And usually some people might be in love with the X technique of securing the dressing. Um, I actually just love to put them across because I think that sort of secures it a little bit better as well as the fact that you need to have a 10p area of visibility so that you can see and assess the VIP score each time you use the cannula. Okay, so that's done. Now I can flush my device. However, let's say I was going to collect my bloods, then I can attach my holdex. take off the air inlet and attach my holdex to this and then unclamp to collect my blood and introduce my bottle for blood collection and you can see that that's filling that is if i thought i needed to collect blood at the same time as inserting my cannula once that's nice and full i can invert as i would five times for this one and clamp and remove my air inlet, my holdex, goes in the sharp spin, and then I can flush my device. So I'm just going to take off the little attachment there, attach that to the cannula, release my clamp, and push pause to flush. So push pause creates turbulence in the line, which generates positive pressure. So five mils on one side. However, you need to flush both sides of the cannula to make sure that there's no blood stains in that side. So again, push pause on that end. Push, clamp on positive pressure. That ensures that my cannula is adequately flushed and I don't get any flashback or blood streaking back into my cannula once that's nicely flushed i am now going to install the dressing that i had prepared earlier now for this dressing you need to rotate it 45 degrees so that you allow for the extension line so that you're not putting the dressing on top of the extension line but you're leaving it quite free so that it doesn't hook up or obstruct um, the dressing application
and as i highlighted earlier you need to be able to see a 10p area of visibility for your vip scores today's date is the 7th, 7th of the 5th 2021 date of insertion i'm not going to create a loop too much however i might just sort of keep this secure um facing gravity so that it doesn't occlude quite easily and there you go now your cannula has been inserted it's been flushed and ideally it's clean that brings us to how you would introduce or cannulate a patient needing a fluid replacement.